So the ISA, ISA becomes the first compensatory strategy. Okay. Gotcha. Because it has to, it, so, so it, again, it's the easiest place to make the adjustment. The, the right, yeah, it, exactly. It's, it's, so the constraints are lessened, right? So you look at the 10th rib, it's got a singular facet. So the 10th rib is easier to move than all the other ones because the other ones have, have a facet above and below to each vertebra. So, so they, they affect two vertebra. The 10th rib has its own facet, okay? So, so it's got, it, it, in, in an old school manner, it would have greater degrees of freedom, right? So it's easier to move. And that's, that represents the, the widest point in the ISA, right? It's, like, it's at the bottom because everything else is are the, the floating ribs, right? Um, and then everything else is cartilage below that level of the sternum. And so that stuff bends very easily. All you got to do is push on somebody's rib cage, and then that's what you end up with, right? So Alfred is exhaled. He is suffocating. Grabbing him like a bus driver. <laughs> 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 All right. So, so, so he opens the ISA to drop the diaphragm so he can breathe in. Okay. Now, if he's wide, what that means is, is because of, of, of as the as the ISA opens, the ribs bend, and so that bend creates a space below the level of the scapula, right here. So, so, so as you're squatting, you have to be able to go there, there, and there again to get all the way down, right? So it's just like the it's just like the weightlifter with the weight overhead that has to change physically change the shape of his body to keep the weight centered over his foot, right? Because I have to control my center of mass, and so anything additional is part of me, right? Becomes part of me, and so as you sit down, because I'm going through an IR where it, where it would be descend, ascend, descend, right? Because of the transition of the hip joint moving through space. Right, so this relationship. I mean, the hip is influencing the pelvis. The pelvis is influencing the hip as you pass through the, the range of motion, the descent and squat. Right. Yeah. No, that's exactly what happened. But that's what the sticking. That's why the sticking point for me is so powerful as a representation of what's going on. And 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 while you can look at it from the, the peripheral standpoint, as like you know a, a leg hip thing. I think it's a pelvic diaphragm thing all day long because that's where the pressure management, you know, yeah. becomes so much more important. Because if I can't create an overcoming pressure, I ain't getting out of a squat. If I can't release the pressure, I can't get down. So this is so so right foot is is behind you, it's on the ground, you're in late propulsion, but the left foot is off the ground. So I have not made ground contact with the left foot yet. Okay. So that means that I have to I I have to position my left leg, which is the eccentric yielding strategy, right? Because I'm at the two ends of the I'm I'm I'm, I'm still at the two ends of the gait cycle, right? So 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 anteriorly I'm eccentric on both, just one is overcoming and one is. Uh, yielding. Okay. Is the right foot is preparing for the dancer? Yes. And that's why it's overcoming. Yes. So so remember so so as I so this is my this is my positioner, right? This is this is my pusher to get the leg to go forward into the position. So I gotta have. I have to overcoming on the backside, but I have to yield to, to put my leg into a straight line. So you think about, so a squat, a true squat, the, the butt doesn't go back, it goes down between your knees, right? So it's the direction. So if you think about the anterior aspect of, of, the, of the, the pelvic floor going straight, this is straight, right? It's putting it down below me, right? So that's how you know that, that you've got an eccentric orientation. This one is straight, so I got an eccentric orientation. Get it? Okay. There's no, I have no ground contact, so I don't have anything to overcome on. Okay. <coughs> I, think, I think that's part of it. So the eccentric, the concentric, I think 
vehicle was totally when I was looking at it last night. Just, I guess I was looking at it from the forward back. And right where I was, like, the, the left side makes sense to me. The right side, I'm like, all right. Which direction are you walking? So you're going forward. Yeah. This is walking forward. Right. Okay. So if I'm walking forward. If I so if I was eccentric on the back side, what direction would my hips be going? They go backwards. So the minute I make this eccentric, I'm doing that. I got you. Okay, that's it. It's, it's like a it's like an RDL. I don't want an RDL unless I'm walking forward, right? An RDL would push my hips back. That's an eccentric orientation here. Okay, I mean, so that's 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 the focus I'm looking at. Pelvis going this way and this way. I don't know which way is well. Like, when like you speak Alabama, I'm going, I'm going, I have no <laughs> idea what you mean. <laughs> I'm going this way, forward and back, like or on a. I don't even know how to words now, but like, I guess I guess where I was getting confused is I was going like I'm still. At one point, I was looking too much at like still thinking about specific muscles, and I'm like, all right, now I'm looking at the bag of butts. I guess the like what specifically is eccentric and concentric I was sort of still so I'm looking we're at looking down position. okay at the bottom of the pelvis. Okay. Is this fair to say that you that, that like that but I'm that, also looking at the cross section of the thorax. Right. Okay. This is me managing the managing pressure at the bottom. Bottom of the pelvis, bottom of the thorax. And if you want to get technical, that's, that's okay. That helped because I like I didn't question. Question. Yeah, I, I was yeah. having trouble with like the perspective. I wasn't thinking top down. I'm looking into the bottom. Okay. I'm, I'm looking down from okay. above. That helps a lot. Yeah, the thoracic, all the way up, all the way down. Sure. Bottom spacing. Gotcha. It's fair to say that the eccentric is always the direction of motion, which even when they're like the direction of the turn. Okay, so so this, uh, this is eccentric is position for sure, but but I'm a concentric yield. Yeah. That means I'm so I'm sh I'm I'm in a shortened position, but I'm holding. This is going backwards. I'm saying so, like because so if we're talking top two or anterior, like you're walking in that direction, so that if the front two are eccentrically oriented, you have to be going in that. Direction. You're going yes, yeah. yes, oh, for, sure. for sure. For sure, offset, then it's a turn. It has to be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that makes more sense. That makes more sense. Because yeah. it's allowing motion forward. Yeah. So then that would be reverse if this was retro motion. Because then it would be the right. Yeah. I was like, so if I was doing that, it it it, it would be concentric eccentric. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That makes a lot of What's the difference between a squat and a and a hinge, yeah. right? For the right side, where we're concentric yielding, mm -hmm. we no longer the reason why we're yielding is because we've reached we're so way of propulsion standing here. We no longer need to overcome anything that we need to. This allows me to turn. Okay. I have to advance my pelvis forward, so I have to. So so if, if so, let me erase this and I'm going to screw it up. Okay, and and you'll see it. You'll see why it won't work. Falling forward, right? What 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 would happen if, if both if, if I had concentric overcoming on both sides? What would happen? Jump straight up. I would do that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so what I do because this is a yielding strategy, so it's a short position, so I'm everything's going forward. The concentric orientation assures that I'm going forward, but because I make this a yield, I, because I make this a yielding strategy, this is delayed, and so now I get to move my my left pelvis ahead of my right pelvis. That's all it is. That's all this is. This just allows me to advance left side ahead of right side. That's why I need an overcoming strategy on the front side. So, so from a positioning standpoint. Right? I gotta stop this from moving. I gotta push this back so this left side can step forward because I gotta get my left foot on the ground, otherwise I'm face planting. 
kind of circling. Highest up. pressure. So it's remember the pressure volume yeah, relationship? So think part. about this. So this is why this is such a beautiful thing for me is because <laughs> that is the highest pressure and it is, and it, and it, there's less movement, right? So higher pressure, right? More velocity. And then it just goes, whoa. Yeah. And you can also kind of arrow this in the other direction of how this yield concentric. Like to overcome the yielding, one pelvis shifting back, one shifting forward, you can also do that as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. So that's the, the arrow you drew is the direction of where the pelvis would be shifting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and back, yeah. and then you do the swirl yeah. on top of it. It's just a step forward. It's just, it's, it's, just, just it's like, forward. how do you get your leg forward? I push this one forward, I hold this one back. But this, for a rotational athlete, If you see, so I'm going to use a right-handed baseball picture because it's, it's a great representation of this. So as he steps towards home plate with his left foot, okay, um, for him to maximize the ability to, to turn and, and create velocity for the ball, the shortest distance is in a straight line, right? So he wants to do that. So just like in this step, but before his foot hits the ground, so he's stepping towards home plate, he's doing this, he's doing this, he's doing this. And as soon as his foot hits the ground, he wants to do that as fast as he can because that's what creates velocity. However, if he hits and he doesn't yield, he's going to hit and his pelvis is going to take the long way around. And then you lose velocity because I took, I, it's a greater distance Right, and it's a slower turn, where you'll see them break their knee, like like a, for a baseball pitcher, so they break their knee, they'll bend their knee, and then they try to decelerate in IR instead of ER. So they, they have to bend. They, so it's like being in a lunge. They, they, they get into this position to decelerate versus this position to decelerate. These guys throw harder than these guys, right? Because the, the guys that can decelerate in an ER position make a faster 